sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. The MacBook Air, Apple's most popular Mac, is fully, finally back. And I don't say that lightly, not at all. In October of 2018, Apple brought the Air out of hibernation and gave it a modern makeover, mostly. It got the updated design, high density retina display, and USB-C interface that made the 12 inch MacBook its once and former successor so compelling. But it also inherited the butterfly keyboard, which was meant to be thinner and more stable, but ultimately proved to be divisive and just unreliable. It also got Intel's Core M low power chipset, which was fine for casual and ultra mobile workflows, but just wasn't as robust as the former Air's Core i. And it was more expensive, not than the 12 inch or the initial prices of the previous Airs, but than the low, low price the immediately previous Air had dropped to over the years. Now, some 18 months later, Apple is aiming to fix all of that with an even more modern update. Again, mostly. Hit me up at Renee Ritchie on Twitter or Instagram if you haven't already. I have some big news coming your way later this week. This is the 2020 MacBook Air and also Vector. Okay, firstly, the bezels. Unlike the 16 inch MacBook Pro, this MacBook Air doesn't update anything in terms of pushing the screen out any further towards the corners. And that's unfortunate. Not only because a lot of Apple's competitors have gone edge to edge, but because doing so allows for a bigger screen in the same size casing, which is just a win for everyone. It's also still standard sRGB gamut, not the wider P3 gamut that the pros have had for a few years. Most people probably won't notice or even care about the difference, but it's something for photographers to keep in mind. And it's also got the same T2 chip for real-time encryption and touch ID, no T3 yet or face ID, which just seems inevitable for these machines. Now, maybe Apple is saving all that up for the next big redesign or the still mythical MacBook arm with every other bell and wish list whistle, who knows? If and when that day finally comes, I really, really hope it comes with the Face ID camera from the iPhone as well, because the 720p one Apple keeps including on the Air is just barely better than a potato, especially now when we're all living on FaceTime and Skype and Meet and Zoom, when good quality video conferencing isn't just a nice to have, but the only humanizing interpersonal connection many of us still have. Ports are still two USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 and still both on the same side. I get that it's much, much simpler and more efficient to engineer them that way, but as someone who loves, loves, loves the ability to plug the MacBook Pro in on either side, I miss that every time I use the Air. Finally, the colors are still silver, space gray and Apple's current gold, which is what I'm reviewing. Now, I usually put pricing at the end so I can weigh the value of everything I've just reviewed against the cost of what Apple's asking for. But with the updated MacBook Air, I'm gonna put it right up front. $9.99 for the base model, $8.99 for students. That's the price that catapulted the second generation MacBook Air into becoming the laptop for the mainstream. The one you saw in every classroom, coffee shop, at every press event. The Airs have all cost more than that at launch, of course, a lot more at times, as Apple tries to recoup R&D and tooling costs from early adopters. But as savings kick in at scale, they drop them down. It's taken 18 months for the Air to get back under a thousand bucks, something I'll point out the 12 inch MacBook was just never able to do. And when you combine that starting at 999 price tag with the Air's build quality, Mac OS, and all the free software that comes with it, it just provides a ton of value and value that lasts for years. And if performance is just as valuable to you as portability, you can now spec the new Air out to $2,249 fully loaded, giving it a better range of options for a wider range of customers. So if you have an old MacBook Air or 12 inch MacBook, even the old 13 inch MacBook Pro with the escape key, and you've been waiting to upgrade, then wait no more. This is very much the new MacBook Air you've been waiting for. The new MacBook Air swaps out the old battered butterfly keyboard for the new magic hotness. Introduced with the 16 inch MacBook Pro last fall, it has new keycaps and domes with more travel that lock out at the top to maintain stability, but use scissor switches to restore reliability. And somehow that manages to balance out the best of both keyboard worlds, at least for me. It also brings back the inverted T-shaped arrow key layout that's just so much better for touch typing. Don't ever take those away again. Signed, A Grateful Nation. 
I've been using the Magic Keyboard on the 16 inch MacBook Pro for around six months now, and it feels identical on the new MacBook Air. Now, I actually really like the feel of the old butterfly keys and was worried the new scissor switches would be as loosey goosey as the old ones, but so far, so great. The new scissor beats them both, and I just want it on everything. And since it's also coming to the new iPad Pro in May, so does Apple, it seems. Intel is years behind on their silicon roadmap. So far behind, it's affected almost every single Mac Apple's tried to ship over the last few years, and more recently, tipped the value prop of processor power decidedly in AMD's direction. Apple has mitigated some of the issues by abstracting away the processors, using custom performance controllers and the metal framework to target CPU, GPU, even the custom accelerators inside the T2 chips to always try and find the best possible performance for any given task. But here, with the new MacBook Air, Intel has finally delivered 10th generation Ice Lake mobile chipsets on their new Sunny Cove architecture and, at long, long last, their new 10 nanometer process. That should translate into more power efficiency or faster cooler operations for everyone. And unlike last time when there was only one mid-range option because the other options weren't really much of an option, this time you can also choose between an i3, i5, or i7, which means for the first time you can get a MacBook Air with a quad core. Apple says that makes these new Airs up to twice as fast as the old Airs, with up to 80% better graphics thanks to the added execution units on Intel's Iris Plus architecture. With display stream compression, that's even enough to drive up to a 6K Pro Display XDR if a tiny, tiny laptop and massive, massive screen is really how you want to roll. For me, using an iPad with sidecar is just a much more frequent and I'd argue productive use case. Anyway, those are just numbers. To put the new Airs to the test, I loaded 80 gazillion Chrome tabs and Electron apps. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's Jonathan Morrison's thing. What I did was edit this 4K RAW video right here on this MacBook Air. And well, while I'd still use a 16 inch MacBook Pro for the horsepower and speed that comes with it, for the first time ever, an M-Class Intel Mac didn't choke to death on my videos. And that's something. With up to two terabytes of storage on the new models, you can even keep a few of those 4K videos right on the machine, or, you know, more realistically, a ton of smaller vacation or social video projects. Now, if video isn't your thing, the new baseline now starts at 256 gigabytes, which should be at least manageable for people who do more casual computing or store most of their big and numerous files on the cloud. Battery life is rated at 11 hours of web surfing, 12 hours of TV app playback. I haven't had the new Air long enough to stress test that yet, and rendering video certainly cuts it down considerably, but I'll keep an eye on it for the next couple of weeks and let you know how well it works out. And yeah, insert all your MacBook ARM cliches right here. For the last few years, Apple's been on an absolute tear when it comes to audio. They built a huge lab outside Apple Park, dove deep into computational sound with the HomePod, and have been amping up every other speaker and mic with the resulting technology, including now the ones on the MacBook Air. The mics aren't what Apple calls studio quality, like the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is what I'm using to record this audio right now. But here's what the new MacBook Air mics sound like, which is decidedly better than before. Certainly good enough for audio or video chats if you don't have your headphones handy. Same with the speakers. They're not quite up to the new 16 inch MacBook Pro's level, which I would say are still industry leading, but they're way better than before. Apple pegs the numbers at twice the bass and 25% more volume. In other words, boomier and louder. They're also clearer to my ears and they support Dolby Atmos playback and Apple's own spatial audio technology. That way, everything sounds terrific, including Nebula. That's the streaming video service I'm building with education creators like Sarah Z, Kento Bento, Lindsay Ellis, Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, Wendover, and so many others, where you can find originals like Real Engineering's incredible Logistics of D-Day and who knows, maybe a little something from me at some point as well. And because Nebula now comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series, like Secrets of the Solar System. It's the ultimate guide to our little corner of the universe, told by the dedicated people who sent spacecraft up and out to explore the sun, the planets, and so much more. By signing up for just $19.99 a year, for the whole year, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create exactly the kind of content you really want us to create. Go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and now Nebula as well, and enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days.
Thanks Curiosity Stream, thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So the performance is back, the keyboard is back, and the pricing is back. And that means, like I said at the beginning, the MacBook Air is finally fully back. At least that's what I think. Now I'd love to hear from you. Hit like if you do, share if you care, and then hit up the comments and let me know. Is this the MacBook Air for you? Thanks for watching. See you next video.